It was pretty strict. No swearing either. No swearing. No swearing. Although my mom would spell the swear words. Because then they don't count, apparently. She didn't spell bad words. She didn't spell like a sailor. But, she, but I understand spelling in front of, you know, little kids. But there'd be a whole room full of adult readers. And she would still, oh, D-A-M it, H-E double toothpicks. Said, Mom, we know we can read. We can all read. All of us. So can God. We're pretty sure. He's literate. We think he's highly literate. Like she thought she found a loophole for swearing. She spells it, God's up there. Whoa, what'd she say? Did anybody, did anybody get that? Did you get that? Was that some sort of a code language? Was that Navajo? That was Navajo. Gabriel, fetch me a wind talker. No swearing. My dad would almost swear. Uh, he'd come close, his favorite. Shoot! I said, shoot. No, you said, shoot. Which is Texan for shoot, Dad. And we couldn't. We couldn't spell swear words even. If we even spelled a swear word, my mom would knuckle us. Did anybody else get knuckled? She would, right here, once your skull congealed, it was fair game for this middle knuckle. Right there, just whack. That knuckle, which eventually was arthritic. <laughs> yeah. It's serious, they call it rheumatoid arthritis. I call it karma, but <laughs> knuckle you. Kids teach you stuff. Every parent, every parent in this room learned this lesson the exact same way. The exact same way. If you have little bitty kids, do not teach them to speak. <laughs> Children are like little tape recorders that play back when we do not need them to play back. Who's been busted like that? Every one of us. The following is a true story. My mother-in-law, Nana, was driving the boys somewhere one day, going to do something to annoy me. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Was that a turkey call? That was awesome. <laughs> Never done a show on a farm. This is great. Anyway, Nana had to stop real fast for a red light. The boys in the back seat, she had to stop real fast. Our youngest son yelled a cuss word. Y'all, when Nana come to, <laughs> she turned to his big brother. What did your brother say? He repeated the word and goes, Daddy says it every time you call. <laughs> Funny now, <laughs> at the time I had a hacked off Nana on my hands, and you cannot get away from a big woman in a trailer. <laughs> they can stomp on their end and tilt it up, and you just slide to them. It's like being in a feed hopper. Gravity and linoleum are not your friends in a Nana fight. That. I don't like when people use air quotes. You ever see those weirdos, right? We have that one friend who will try to use air quotes. They have no idea what they're doing, right? Just randomly start using them. They'll still be like, yeah, I was walking down the street the other day. And I saw a curb. And I tripped and fell into a puddle. Now, I don't understand. Air quotes are weird because you don't use them for other forms of punctuation, you know? Like parentheses. How great would that be, parentheses? You're walking down the street, you see someone you don't like. Hey, and they see I hate your guts. <laughs> You're an idiot. But you can't hear me because I'm talking in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> or you're hanging up a painting in your house, you're hammering away, you're like, honey, this new painting's gonna look great. Oh, ampersands, pound sign, asterisk. <laughs> Son of an anna circle. <laughs> -wee. Man, that hurts. Dang it. Ouch. Exclamation point. I don't know if you guys are catching this here. Some of you guys are looking like, what the heck? 
some of the Spanish people are like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a family where we weren't allowed to swear. And, uh, I mean, I, I think that's pretty common. There's not a lot of moms out there that are like, just one F word for mommy. <laughs> just want to hear from your sweet little face. <laughs> from your face to my astonished face. Give me an F word. Come on. Let me, hit me with it. It's not a common thing. But, yeah. We had the next level though, right? In my family, like we didn't say shut up, we said shush up to each other. We were at that level. Shush up. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. But I still don't say shut up, I think it's rude. Who says shut up? I'm still saying shush up. I'm still like shush up and dance with me. You know, I just, I can't say it. It's rude. But we couldn't say but. I used it twice there, but one of them had two T's. <laughs> we could use the conjunction. The conjunction was allowed, but we couldn't. Two T's, four letter word, too far. <laughs> That's when it was done. Which is ridiculous. It was hard to tell stories without saying but. Sometimes it's easier to say but. I was talking about a time I was sledding. I was like, Dad, we went sledding, but guess what? The sled broke, so we just kept sledding down the hill on our butt. My dad, whoa! <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> you forgot who you were. <laughs> okay, fine, dad. I slotted down the hill on my bum. Do you hear how stupid that sounds? <laughs> sounds like I'm sliding down the hill on a homeless man that I own for some reason. <laughs> Come on, Gus, let's go. I'm gonna slide down the hill on you. You're my bum. Here we go, I'll hold you. My dad, we don't say bum either. Cause that's weird what you did with your homeless friend there. You slid down the hill on your homeless friend, not on your bum, that's rude. Also, why do you have homeless friends? You're a lousy friend. <laughs> they should stay the night or something. I didn't know what to say. I was like, fine, okay, in our house, we can't say but, we can't say bum. What can we say? My dad thinks about it. We can say bim. We'll say bim. How about that? <laughs> no, uh, that's a weird made up word, dad. It's not a real word. It makes it sound like we're a British family or something. <laughs> I slid down the hill on me bim father. What a great day! I slid all the way to the bim of the hill. We couldn't say bottom either. <laughs> Just rule after rule. It's ridiculous. I have weird friends. I have, I'm friends with a five-year-old. Uh, he's my neighbor and he's just one of these kids that just kind of shows up at your house and you're like, okay, I guess you're part of the show now. You're at my house. Where are your parents? But okay. You're so lucky I'm me. And I'm just gonna talk to you. And I, I do, I talk to him. And he tells me about kids at school and somebody who was picking on him and he was going on. He's, he's like, yeah, this kid, Jeremy, he's just a real juice pouch. And blah, 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 blah. Just on and on about Jeremy the juice pouch. And I had to stop him. I was like, hold on, uh, juice pouch? And without skipping a beat, he was like, my mom doesn't let me say douchebag, and just kept going. <laughs> I was like, I get it, buddy. I get it. I say bim, my man. And I now say juice pouch, turns out. It's way better than the other one that is probably getting edited out on Braxton's show. Sorry about that, Braxton. I didn't mean to. You gotta cut that one out. I would. Juice pouch, so much friendlier. That's the way to go. I'm excited to be here. I didn't, uh, I didn't know if I was gonna make it here because there was an accident on the big road 
where I live on the way to the airport. And if I missed my flight, then I, I wouldn't be here. And I don't think anybody got hurt, but I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be here tonight. All right, almost as lucky as you are. But not everybody knows how to drive on the big road. So I thought I would maybe tell you. So why don't you sit down and listen up? All right, the big road is a tapestry of lanes. There's a passing lane, and when you wanna pass someone, you get in the passing lane and you pass them. It's pretty simple when you think about it, but not everybody does, because if you're in the passing lane and cars in the slow lane are going faster than you, you, my friend, are a hole in the tapestry, okay? <laughs> you're a pass hole. <laughs> Maybe you should spend your time on the little roads, okay? <laughs> I told you, I'm not the best driver. And uh, I remember this one time, um, Robert Frost once told me a story about taking a fork in the road. Yes, he did. He said, two roads diverge in the wood, and I took the one less traveled by, blah, blah, blah. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> but when you're on the big road, sometimes people see a lane next to them open up, and they think it's a fork in the road, and they got to take the fork in the road, so they'll be in this lane for a minute, and this lane opens up, and they get into that lane for three seconds, and they realize there's an opening back here in the lane where they were, and so they get back in that lane. Hey, just because it's a tapestry doesn't mean you have to weave the whole time, all right? <laughs> Stupid forker, I told you, I'm, I'm not that strong of a driver. Robert Plant of the Led Zeppelins once told me a story about taking a fork in the road. Yes, he did. He said, yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. And it makes me wonder, yeah, it makes me wonder how you got your driver's license in the first place, because between you pass holes who are crawling in the wrong lane and you forkers who are darting back and forth, leaving behind a trail of swears and middle fingers, it takes me forever to get to my job of being a professional communicator, of which being good at, I am one of them guys. So I just want to do it right. I want to be a good parent, but it's hard, right? It's really difficult. My son has started swearing, not swear words, because we don't use them in the house. Words we taught him, you don't say. We taught him you don't say stupid and you don't say hate, because those two words, you create conflict by taking somebody's dignity. We use those to illustrate that. So to him, stupid and hate are the two worst words in the world. And I put him in a timeout. He called me a stupid hate. <laughs> Both those words are the F word. I know exactly what he said to me. <laughs> I'm not stupid, you little hate. I broke your code. Two days before I came here, he called me a stupider. He added ER to stupid. <laughs> it created effort out of thin air. I was so proud. <laughs> He's a linguist. He's a genius. I can't even tell the counselors. My daughter, my daughter is really the one that holds me accountable. You know, if I say something inappropriate, like if I'm too mad, if I say something that she doesn't like, uh, she wouldn't necessarily, she hasn't sung this song to me, but I thought when I heard it for the first time, this would be exactly what she could sing to me to make sure that I understand what she's feeling as a little girl. She took my arm, I don't know how it happened. She sat me down and she said, you know you can't say that, not in this family, even though you're the dad. Shut up! She said, ooh, ooh, shut up, somebody word to me. That's right. <laughs> what else? I've been doing some traveling. I was recently working in Idaho because my career is on fire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know I'm so excited to be here, right? <laughs> You've been there. No, it's really nice. Idaho was nice. The people were great. They didn't get my comedy. They just didn't. So it was kind of a living hell for me while I was there. Hell as a noun, so it's okay. Um, it's in the scriptures. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
And then while I was there to make it extra special for me, they put me up in a Motel 6. <laughs> so it was kind of like being in hell at hell. <laughs> it was like hell squared. <laughs> I think they should be Motel 666 myself. <laughs> Wow, I hesitated saying that. But the reward was fantastic. I'm a bad boy! I'm a dangerous man! What I hate, though, I, and I hate is why people swear. You guys don't swear. It's okay. Well, in your car, I bet you do. Right? <laughs> Oh, man. I hate when people swear and they replace their swear words with food items. I hate that. Like, cheese and rice. Ooh. I hate that. Just say it. You mean it, you know? <laughs> Actually, I found myself doing that the other day. I stubbed my toe on the coffee table, and I was like, stovetop stuffing instead of potatoes, that hurt. Thank you. I am excited to be here. And the dry bar comment, they're like, man, they're like, when you go there, don't say any bad words. I was like, all right, I'm not going to. And then they made me feel like I was sitting in my grandma's house, so I'm definitely not going to. <laughs> you don't cuss at grandma's house, you know what I mean? Forget about it. I go to my brother's house. His son is in the timeout. I didn't know what timeout was. At the time, I didn't have a child. I thought they were playing hide and seek. The boys. I see a six-year-old boy counting against the wall. I think the other one's hiding. I'm looking under the beds and stuff. My brother goes, what are you doing? I go, where's Luca? He goes, no, no, Luca's out playing. James in timeout. I said, oh, you do time out? He goes, you gotta. Can't hit him anymore. I said, really? I did not know that. I take that into consideration whether I want to have children or not. I said, why is James in a time out? My brother said he said a curse word at his mother. I said, I said, I said, which one? He says, the big one. I said, he said, the, yeah, yeah. I said, and, 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 and all he gets is to count against the wall? That'll teach him. I said, let, let me ask you something. <laughs> if you or I ever said the big one to mom or dad, would, would we be standing here right now having this conversation? One of us had a limp, one of us had no teeth in our mouth. <laughs> My brother goes, that's the way it is. He just can't spank him anymore. I said, wow, that's something. I remember when they got hit for getting hurt. Anybody remember that? <laughs> remember coming in bleeding, looking for sympathy? Ma, I cut my, didn't I tell you not to play by the fence? <laughs> now you can bleed to death, stupid. <laughs> Wait till your father gets home. <laughs> Think you're hurting now. <laughs> right, but we all got hit and look at us, we turned out great. We drink a little, but we're okay. My mother threw a glass ashtray in my head with a lit cigarette still in it. That was considered good parenting in 1978. No, my mother saw me doing something wrong. She could not get to me in time, so she diffused the situation by taking an ashtray. <laughs> and stopping me from getting hurt further. That's what she was doing. <laughs> One little bump on the head to avoid something big. <laughs> and I would've got hurt further, because now I realize 40 years ago that happened and I was wrong. She was right. I never should have tried to talk to her during her soap opera. I know that now. <laughs> I'm in Utah. <laughs> it's different here. All right, it's, it's peculiar, is what it is. I mean, don't get me, I'm Mormon, but I'm California Mormon. That's different than, we have different rules than you do. I like coffee, cigarettes, all that, it's okay. All right, you guys have a whole different, and we get to use real cuss words. We don't make them up, all right? I grew up in California, I had a missionary companion, Elder Allred from Springville, Utah. Don't, don't applaud that. <laughs> I had never heard made up cuss words. We're getting ready to hop on our bicycles and go out and bug people. And uh, I swear to you, a bird pooped 
right on the crown of his head. Right, I mean, it was a bullseye. Sh- that bird had to be aiming, just big plop. And he goes, frickin', frickin' cheese and rice, you mother bastard! <laughs> have him use because now I, I'd rather have him use the real words because now I got to try and translate what it was I got out my urim and thummim and I'm like what do you frick and frack that's yeah I did a urim and thummim joke yeah frick and frack that's two f words cheese and rice oh wow that mother fargan bats wow I just say the real words say the real words. So because I tell that story, people come up and they tell me more stories. And my rules are, I go, it's got to, I don't want urban legend. I want to know real story. You were there. And this guy goes, all right, I was bishop. He goes, my seven-year-old son gets up and he walks up to the pulpit. He goes, so I'm on the stage. I'm three feet behind him. And I'm just going, oh no, what's he going to say? He says, um, we're trying to be more like Jesus in our house by not using the F word. <laughs> I use it all the time. My mom uses it all, and my dad, he uses the F word all the time, more than all of us. And we're trying to use better language now, right? And as he finishes up, the father just steps up real quick. He goes, fart. Fart at our house, our house, F words, fart, just so y'all 